If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. Chris Gutierrez is back on the show. He is back in the Octagon next weekend in Uruguay. He takes on Geraldo de Freitas. How are you, Chris? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm hanging in there, doing what I can, you know? Excellent. It's great to have you back on. We have a lot to discuss. And, you know, we chatted prior to your last fight with Ryan McDonald, and you looked pretty fantastic in that fight. You got that elusive first win in the UFC under your belt. How did that all feel to, to go in there and come out of it with your first victory? Man, it's amazing. It's a it's a feeling you can't explain. It's uh, but I'm happy, man. I'm happy that I finally got my first win under the UFC banner, and uh, you know, I'm keeping that same energy and that same momentum going for the next one. Did it feel like a, a weight was lifted off your shoulders? I know your first fight, you know, didn't go your way. There were a lot of obstacles kind of heading into that fight that you were dealing with. Did you feel like a, a weight lifted off your shoulders once the scorecards were officially read and you got your hand raised? Um, in a way, I mean. Some of those problems I'm still going through, you know, well, I'm actually still going through that nasty custody battle. But, um, you know, anytime you win, man, it alleviates a lot of things off your shoulders. But, you know, like I've been saying, I, I think the, the most, the, the best thing that I've done is, is I'm at peace with whatever's going on and uh, I've accepted it. And, man, I, I feel like I've made, you know, leaps and bounds from where I was, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's not funny that you mention it, but I'm glad you mentioned it because you know heading into that fight, you seemed in a in a much better place. You had been sort of accepting of what's been going on, but you know it's been widely discussed heading into that fight. You know, in regards to your custody battle and your son, and it seemed like things were were starting to turn the corner with all that. But you know, I watched your interview with James Lynch that you did the other day, and you revealed that you haven't seen your son in five months. Is that true? That's true, man. That's true. It's some there's some evil people in this world, you know, and um, unfortunately, um, they don't know how to put away their greed and they take it out on on the kid. Cause you know that's essentially what they're doing is they're taking it out on the kid, not me. They keep they're you know they're stripping their their son. She's stripping her son from a relationship with 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 his dad, you know, and um, you know I feel sorry for my son in, in that aspect. But, you know, it's true. I haven't seen my son in five months. So, you know, this next one is going to be, you know, any anytime I go in there and I, and I go to war, I always think of my son and my family. That's Those are the top two things that, that are on my mind. And um, August 10th, they'll be on my mind, and uh, I'm going to get the job done. What happened with all of that, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know how deep you can get into everything because it's, you know, a custody battle and there's legal stuff going on. But what, you know, whatever you could say. It. Um, so what happened was, um, he just turned to June 2nd, I mean, June 1st, I'm sorry. Um, two weeks before my Ryan McDonald fight, uh, the one in Nashville, I lost all visitations to him. So two weeks before that fight, I lost all visitations, all form of contact. So what they did is I was going to see him at a visitation center and, um, they basically one week, he, you know, the following week he ran in there, data, you know, he ran up to me, gave me hugs, kisses, you know, everything was wonderful. I was like 12 visits away from being able to take him away. I was I was 12 visits away from being able to have him unsupervised for like three or four hours. So I was moving up in the, in the plan. Um, the next following week came in and he was like scared shitless to go in his rooms with me. Like he was scared to even like leave the mom's side. So I was like, okay, maybe he's not having a good day. They cancel the visit. Well, they ask him, hey, Adrian, do you want to see your dad? Do you want to go home? He was like, home. Said, okay, cool. They canceled the visit because he wanted to go home. I said, okay, man, they gave they gave a kid the option to choose? I said, okay, that's weird. The next week came around, same thing. But this time he was like more like, no, 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 no. Like, like, like he's afraid to go past these doors. Well, then all of a sudden the mom is like, do you want to stay, you know, and sometimes she wouldn't even call me dad. She would be like, "Do you want to stay with Chris, or do you want to do you want to go home with, you know?" And, and and but the thing is, the way they were wording it was like you could tell it was being manipulations going on, 
you know, they would never, and I, and I would tell the facility, like, hey, switch the way she's wording it. Say, do you want to go home or do you want to stay with dad? But, because kids are prone to repeat the last thing they hear. Right. And, and she was like, no, I'm not going to say that, you know, all this bullshit. And, and I was just like, that's when I realized, like, wait a minute, there's some scheming going on. But, and this was the facility's, um, this was their excuse. They're not a licensed psychiatrist, so they can't determine if that's, if that's true, what's going on. And I was like, it's obvious what's going on. But, so yeah, all that happened and, and it's been five months. So all that happened two weeks, one week prior to that fight? Exactly. Man, so you can, so obviously, you know, you have grown leaps and bounds because, you know, you would think that if that happened before the fight at the tough finale, you know, things would have been a lot different. So, I mean, how are you able to handle all that? How are you, I, I know you, you have a great relationship with Mark Montoya. I know Ian Heinish has been one of those guys that has had your back and you built this strong community, you know, around you at Factory X. Is that just like the biggest catalyst on how you're able to, to move forward with everything? Cause that's, that's a lot of extra weight on your shoulders that you have to deal with. It is, it is. And, um, just like you said, I have a big family at Factory X. What it is, man, is, um, Coach Mark and Ian, you know, and a, and a couple others, they've helped me, you know, I started going to church religiously, and that's one thing Coach said. He's like, you know, people only seek God whenever they're in, in times of need, but they never seek him when things are going good. And, of course, you know, I was going through a, a lot of things. I, I was going through a lot of things. For instance, I'll tell you, uh, February of last year, I almost committed suicide. So, yeah. And, um you know, I, I knew I was on the wrong path, so I, I had to either change it. I had to, I, I was either, you know, I was either going to end up dead or something, you know, worse, so in jail, dead, or, you know, I just, I was going to fade into oblivion. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. So I, I had to, I had to turn my life around, you know, and um, I, I did, you know, and it's all because of the relationship I have with God, you know. What, and, um, I'm sorry, but, what, what brought you to that point? Was, was it the custody battle? Was it just a lot of other things? Like what got you to that point? I mean, cause that's a serious thing. And at least, you know, at this point you're, you're willing to talk about it. Obviously it's a thing of the past at this point, but you know, it must've taken some, some extreme circumstances to, to get you to that point. You know, I'll tell you exactly. Um, what it is, is you tell yourself enough lies, you believe it, right? Obviously, that's what my ex did. You know, she got it in her mind that I was really this bad person. You know, after a while hearing this for so much, you're like, man, like, was I really this bad person? Like, why, if I'm showing the court everything, I, everything they're wanting me to show them, I'm doing it. But I'm getting further away from my son. Like, what is, what is it that they see that I don't? Am I, am I really this bad of a person? And I don't know, man, things were just not going good. And I was like, you know what, maybe, I don't know. It, it's just a moment of weakness, honestly. And, um, you know, sorry, man. No, it's all right. You get me going, too. You know, the, the, the devil has a way of, uh, the devil has a way of sneaking in whenever you, you know, you're very vulnerable. And, um, uh, he did. And, uh. Man, it's uh, it was a it was a crazy night that night. Uh, Man, so how how were you able to to bounce back from that? Like, did you were you able to call somebody for help? Like, you know, what happened there? Like, how were you able to to get away from that place? So so two things, man. Um, I uh, that night was was. Uh, uh, a big turning point for me because I, I actually felt uh, the, the presence of God like hold me and um, I actually felt him hug me and um, I, I kept hearing a little voice in my head saying that uh, you're loved and that it's not going to end this way and it just kept echoing in my head you're loved and that it's not going to end this way and I have two pictures in my room it was a picture of my family and a picture of my son and um, those two pictures were like, almost like those pictures had like a little aura around them, like a, like a light. 
you know, it, it just, they caught my attention. And I, at that point, you know, I, I started crying, of course. And, um, uh, I told myself like, wow, like I, I literally told myself, I said, God, like, like my, I'm yours, you know, I, my life is in your hands. Please help me. And, um, the last thing that went through my mind was like, of course, I was like, um, I didn't want my parents because I knew I was going to hurt more than just myself. You know, it's a chain reaction when that happens. Most importantly, I didn't want my son to grow up not knowing the truth, you know, because in reality, they would have put it in his mind that I was really this bad person. And it wouldn't have been until he was like, what? I mean, it would have been years. He probably would have been 30, 40 years old by the time he realized, wow, my dad was never really this bad person. You know? I, I wouldn't have been there to uh, defend my honor, my my love for him, you know? It would have been, oh, your dad took his life because he's that bad of a person. Oh, your family never wanted to see you. Well, no, in reality, you kept all of us from him. That's the truth, you know. And those are those are the biggest things that 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 made me not do that. Was I mean, for me, I'm clearly not a psychologist at all, but or, but I feel at least from where I sit, the fact that you are able to talk about this in a forum and in an interview like this, you know that shows that you're taking major steps forward. Do you agree with that? Like you, you feel, I know this isn't the most comfortable thing to talk about, but the fact that you are willing to talk about it, you know, you could help a lot of people with this at the same time. Is that kind of freeing for you knowing that, you know, you've kind of accepted what has happened in the past, what happened last February when you got to that place, you're obviously in a much better place. Now, the fact that you are accepting what happened, you know, all those months ago, do you feel just better, more comfortable talking about? Does that show that, you know, you know what, after everything I've gone through, I am moving forward. I am moving on. I'm trying to be the best version of myself. And this is part of the story. No, no. Yes. I, um, I realized that, you know, I'm not the only person that goes through this, but what it is, um, a lot of people, we, a lot of people are hurt internally and we can't see that. So, and a lot of people are afraid to talk about it. Because it's embarrassing, you know, it's embarrassing and it's, it's, uh, I don't know, especially as a man, it's like, you know, we live in a society where we, you're called weak if you speak on it, you know, and uh, I, I flipped my mindset and I was like, man, if, if, if I know what I went through it and I talk about it, I wonder how many people will open up and, and start talking about it too. And, and believe it or not, I've actually helped. Uh, two people who were on the verge of, of committing suicide themselves. And just by me, you know, the story, they were able to relate. And essentially, I was able to um, talk them off that ledge, you know, and, and, and I'm happy with that, you know. That's amazing, man. I mean, that's that's good. Do you see yourself potentially, you know, obviously you're a fighter right now. And, you know, a lot of fighters at some point, it's going to come to an end. Um, I know you're not looking at that right now because you get you still got a lot of gas left in the tank, proverbially speaking. But, you know, do you see yourself being a kind of guy that that helps other people along the way? It's kind of as, you know, either something you do on the side or, you know, something to do that, that can actually help yourself along the way, too. Do you see yourself kind of working in that field someday and trying to help others who have gone through some of the same things you've gone through? You know, I think to answer that question, I think. The two most important things, the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you figure out what you're meant to do. And I used to think, oh, you know, I was I was meant to be this fighter. That was selfish. That was just like like a a self fulfilling thing that I wanted to feel, and, and that wasn't true. I think what my purpose in life is to help, inspire, and motivate people, to help people at the end of the day. And I think because, like, I get warm inside when I say that. And I think because that's really my calling, I feel that God has blessed me with the talent to be able to compete at the highest, you know? And, and it's because I really want to help people that he's blessed me and given me the opportunities to do this. And, and, and I fully believe that, you know? And so, yeah, I do. You know, I, 
I've actually went to I've actually went to a school and talked. Um, you know, we, we actually did a, a, a thing here in, in, in South in West Denver. You know, um, for a, it's called the Denver Hope Center, where we go, we help out you know kids and stuff like that, and you know pretty rough neighborhoods. So I like doing stuff like that. Like I enjoy it. You know, and our whole our whole gym came together and we did that. And I like doing stuff like that. That's great. That's great. And, you know, I appreciate your, your openness and your candor to talk about all this, but um, it's hard to transition. But let's talk about the fight, man. You're about to get in the cage and make some money. G- uh, Geraldo, your opponent, he's been on a good little run as of late. He's won seven in a row, won his debut back in February in the UFC. When you got this matchup and you started looking into him, your team started looking into him, how do you like this matchup from a, from a stylistic perspective? He, he's a good opponent, but... Um, I'm gonna get the win. That's that's the only way. That's that's the only option I have. You know, I don't have no other option. When when you when you're left with with one thing, you know, and, and you know, you, you're a dangerous person. I, I'm not left with no other option. So I'm gonna get the win, and I'm gonna die trying. I think he's a very respectful opponent. He comes from a very respectful camp. But at the end of the day, I, he hasn't been tested. Uh, he hasn't fought anybody like me. I fought multiple people like him, and um, it, it is what it is. I, like I said, I respect him. No disrespect to him, but I'm gonna run through him. I'm gonna break him physically, and mentally, and um, I'm gonna get the job done. Where do you see your advantages lying in this fight? Like, what will you be able to exploit from his game? What is, I guess, your big difference maker heading into this fight next weekend? I, he's very. I think he's he's very sloppy. He he comes in recklessly on a lot of things. Um, he doesn't really know how to transition from different things. He just explodes into them, and I'm really good at capitalizing on those mistakes. So I think it's catching him on his sloppiness. You know, his 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 aggression is going to be his downfall. We mentioned we we've talked about it. You know, you are with a a fantastic team on the on the come up at Factory X. We talked about the incredible bonds you formed with Mark Montoya, his wife Ian Heinish, and many of the other folks there. Who are some of the people that? You know, you've been working with specifically to get you ready for this fight. Uh, I mean, I've been working with everybody in the gym. You know, uh, Brandon Roybal, uh, Yusuf Zalaw, Jonathan Martinez, who just fought two weeks ago, um, Devontae Smith. Um, been working a lot with with our uh, jiu- jiu-jitsu instructor, Professor Mario Cojera, um, who's a, an outstanding um, guy and just a you know, a, a legend in the sport, and he's just so good, man, and just soaking up all the knowledge that, that he's been passing down. But even working with, with Coach Mark Montoya, just little things that he – it's amazing. There's little things that, like, he's told me to do in this camp that I've been doing, and I've been throwing my training partners off, and it's so crazy, just little bitty minor little things. And so I, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. You know, I, I appreciate everybody at Factory X. What's it like to train and be a teammate with a guy like Jonathan Martinez? Because obviously he is super talented. He's a guy that's on the rise, but you know he's uh, he's not a big talker. He's not a big communicator. He's getting better. He's getting better. I had a great interview with him. He opened up a little bit, but you know Mark had told me in the past, like when you guys go out to dinner as a team, you guys have to order his food for him. Like, what, what is that like being a uh, being a training partner with a uh, with with a silent assassin like that? So I, that's actually a good name, right? The Silent Assassin. Um, you know, it's pretty cool. Well, I know Jonathan on a personal level, so I can't get him to shut up. <laughs> so I hope he hears this so he can hear me say this. I can't get him to be quiet. But it's nice because we both come from Texas. He lives like four or five hours away from me uh, when we were in Texas. So we were coming up in the same, um, the same rankings, you know, the same uh, local circuits. And um, just to see him now train where, you know, because I'm the one who's like, hey, come to, come here. You need to come here. And, um, you know, just to see where he's where he was to where he's at now, you know, it's a, it's a motivational thing. It just inspires me to want to wanna be, you know, follow those footsteps. So he, he came off a really big win, changed his life, and now, now it's my chance next week. And uh, I'll be damned if I let that opportunity slip by me. Do you see yourself kind of like at a, you know, him and you, you guys have come from the same place. You're at the same gym now. You're both on the come up. Is he kind of like your, your non-official partner in crime, so to speak? Do you guys just kind of bounce things off each other? Are you guys like kind of a tag team in that sense? 
Well, we, we all like, it's like a competitive thing, you know? It's a competitive thing, but with respect. Like, yeah, he got the last win, amazing knockout, and changed his life, you know? I don't envy that at all. I'm just like, hmm, like, what's in store for me next? You know what I mean? Like, what, like how am I going to get this? How am I going to how am I going to surpass that? You know what I mean? And so you have to work hard. You have to be like, okay. And, you know, during the fight, you, um, you know, we're going to have to uh, look for openings and stuff like that and, and be able to, you know, transition quick and things. And ultimately, we're going to get the win. That's the most important thing. Whatever happens afterwards happens. But, the, you know, to get the win first is the most important. Yeah, it's an incredible bond you guys all have over there. And obviously, it's nice to have that competitive nature with someone like Jonathan that can push you in a, in a fun, competitive, friendly way. And uh, in terms of that, how do you see this all playing out next weekend in Uruguay? How do you, how do you see your hand being raised when you visualize the fight playing out? How does, it, how does it usually go down? You know, I've never been the one to really, really uh, predict anything. I've never been the one like, oh, submission, knockout, whatever. I just let the fight come. And I just, I just, I just fight. So I, I know um, I've been feeling that we're not going to need no judges for this fight. Just stylistically, the way we fight and the way he is and the way I am. So we're not going to need no judges. I know my hand will be raised, but how, I, how, what happens that that helps me get my hand raised? I don't know. That's a that's a surprise for all of us. <laughs> Are you excited to to fight in Uruguay? Do you do you have ties to that area in, in any way? Well, my, my family's from South America, you know. Uh, my dad's from South America. I'm all from Central. My dad's Colombian. My mom's from Guatemala. And um, ultimately, man, I, I'm, I'm South American, you know, and uh, I I feel like I'm in my, my own backyard, you know. I just feel like it's, it's it's like I said, it's my land. It's my people. And, and you know, this one's going to be for all of us, you know. And it, it's, it's, it's a good feeling. It's a very good feeling, especially for, for – you know, what happened in my last fight, um, you know, I became the first Guatemalan fighter ever to step foot in the UFC and, and, and then get a win on top of that. So, and then I'll be the first fighter of the night. I'll be making history the first fight ever in Uruguay for the UFC. So I'm excited, man. We're just making history and, and, and breaking records as we go. So I'm excited. So it's kind of a hometown fight feeling for you, one would say, right? Yeah, I, I feel. I feel. I know he's from Brazil too, South America too, but you know it is what it is. That's that's how I feel. This is obviously a really cool thing for you, you know, being somewhat from that, from that, from from South America, being able to fight in Uruguay of all the places you could fight in the UFC because you're gonna have opportunities. The sport continues to grow around the world. If you could fight anywhere in the UFC, where would that be? A city, a country? Where would you want to fight if if the UFC called you and said, you know, hey Chris, you could fight wherever you want. Where would that be? Huh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just, uh, man, you got me on that one. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I, I really don't know. I'm just, I'm just happy and, and I'm enjoying the, the process as it goes. So I'm just, I'm just here, you know, I'm just enjoying it. If all goes well next weekend, you come out there, you finish the fight quick, you come out relatively unscathed. Is that, you want to bounce right back? You want to take some time to kind of enjoy the fruits of your labor at all? Like, do you want to get one more in this year? I mean, obviously we're not looking yeah. past next weekend, but. No, no, I mean, yeah, of course. Like, business is first next week. Uh, business will be handled, but I would like to fight before the end of the year is up, you know? Hey, Christmas is coming up. I want to get my son and my family some nice things, you know? And um, and, and that too. And, and, and plus, like, um, you know, before the end of the year is up, I'd, I'd like I'd like to have my son. So that's that's my goal is 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 win this fight, get my son, win the next one. Have so, they? Yeah. I'm sorry. Have they laid out sort of a path for you to make that happen? Like, do you know what you need to do to get there, or is this just going to be a continuous fight for you? Uh, check this out. So I was actually supposed to see my son. I was actually supposed to start seeing him um, three weeks ago. The judge uh, had a, a hearing with my lawyer over the phone, like, yeah, he's supposed to start seeing the son. Because legally, I feel like some of my rights are being violated because I, you know, I pay child support. I'm, I'm the father. I'm not stripped away from my son. So legally, some of my rights are being violated. And so I, I believe the judge was like, yeah, he's supposed to be seeing the son in constant contact. There's some law in Colorado that says, like, you're supposed to have constant contact with your kid. 
if you're eligible and you're deemed to be in his life, which I am. And so she made a court order, like, hey, he's supposed to start seeing him at this facility, go. I call the facility, there's no doctor that even works there. They, don't, they haven't done those visits in like two years. So I don't know who that looks bad on. The fact that the judge is just saying yes to the opposing side, or the fact that the, the system and, and, and my ex's lawyer are not even on the same page. So, like, who's a little worse off? The fact that her lawyer's not doing the right kind of job, which they don't care. The longer they prolong it, the better. So what I'm trying to say is that they made a, a legal document, a court order, but to a place that doesn't even exist. Wow. Exactly. So, uh, I'll let that marinate with you for a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> How do you think I felt when I called my lawyer and I was like, we got a problem. This place doesn't even have that. They don't even have a doctor by that thing. So, so, what's, uh, the, so what's the next step? Where do you go from here? Well, I, I we haven't been able to get a hold of it. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. So I've, I've messaged, uh, you know, I've, I've messaged the baby mama and I'm like, yo, like, you need to fill out this form because I want to see my son. No. And that's been like that's been like two weeks. So I'm like, we need to get something going, guys. But my lawyers are doing my, they're, they're doing what they got to. It's just we can't get a hold of them. That's crazy, man. Well, at least at least in that sense, there looks to be light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like you know, the positive mindset you have towards everything is just only going to help you get there. So, but obviously the next thing that's on the list is, you know, next Saturday, getting in the cage, fighting in Uruguay. And if all goes well, you know, we could focus on those next things. And, you know, exactly. and what's great about this is I, I really appreciate you opening up and being so honest and telling your story and everything. It's only going to help people down the road. And uh, I know it wasn't easy and I appreciate it very much before we let you go and uh, enjoy this beautiful day. Enjoy this weekend. Get ready to head to Uruguay. Uh, let the folks know where they can find and follow you on the web, social media, follow along on this journey with you. Any shout outs, anything else you want to get off your chest? The floor is yours. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me on. Um, of course, I want to give a big thank you to my team, Factory X, um, my management team, Iridium Sports Agency, uh, with Jason House. Um, some of my sponsors, Trifecta Meals, Nutrifex, uh, Turp House, and everybody that's helped me, you know, behind the scenes, man. Uh, you guys are, are amazing, and you guys are the ones that make it happen. And um, you can find me on social media at Chris Gutierrez in May. El Guapo MMA, it'll, it'll pop up. Other than that, man, I, I appreciate it. To my son, Adrian, I love you. I know one day you'll see these. I love you. And um, to all the people out there fighting, don't stop fighting. All the best to you, Chris. Appreciate the time. Appreciate the candor. Stay positive. I think that's your a very important attribute right now. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back in there next Saturday in Uruguay. Thank you, sir.